Imagine this, Samsung's Exynos is back, and not just back, but beating Qualcomm at its own game. The Exynos 2600, built on Samsung's cutting-edge 2-nanometer process, has shown up on Geekbench with scores that don't just look competitive, they actually crush Snapdragon's latest flagship. On paper, the numbers are shocking. The Exynos 2600 pulls a single-core score of 3,309 and a multi-core score of 11,256. For comparison, the Snapdragon 8 Elite inside the Galaxy S25 hits 2,865 in single-core and 9,487 in multi-core. That's a pretty sizable gap, one that for once doesn't put Exynos in the underdog seat. Even Apple's A18 Pro inside the iPhone 16 Pro only manages 3,447 single-core and 8,575 in multi-core. So yes, Exynos is trading punches with Apple's Silicon while actually outperforming Snapdragon in raw performance. That's not something we've said in years. Now, here's why this matters. For a long time, Samsung's in-house chips had a reputation problem. Exynos processors often lagged behind their Snapdragon counterparts in performance, efficiency, and heat management. Many users dreaded getting the Exynos variant of a Galaxy phone, especially in markets where Snapdragon wasn't available. This new leak flips that script completely. If these Geekbench results are accurate and consistent, Samsung may finally have an Exynos chip that can stand shoulder to shoulder with Snapdragon or even leapfrog it. But before you start celebrating the return of Exynos, there's a catch, a big one. Samsung hasn't confirmed that the Exynos 2600 is anywhere near ready for mass production. Reports suggest that the company's foundry is struggling to stabilize yields on the 2 nanometer process. That means even if the chip is powerful, actually manufacturing it at scale, without defects and at reasonable cost, is a whole different story. We've seen this before. The Exynos 2500 was supposed to launch alongside the Galaxy S25 phones, but production delays forced Samsung to push it back. It ended up debuting months later in the Galaxy Z Flip 7 instead. The Exynos 2600 could be heading down the same road. If Samsung can't get the yields under control, they simply can't ship millions of these chips in time for the Galaxy S26. Adding to the complication is Qualcomm's next move. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 2, which is expected to power the Galaxy S26 series, has already been tested and reportedly finalized for production. That means Samsung is leaning on Qualcomm again, at least for its upcoming flagship phones. Even if the Exynos 2600 is ready in small quantities, it's unlikely Samsung would risk making it the primary chip in such a high-stakes launch. There's always the possibility of a dual strategy, where Samsung splits regions between Exynos and Snapdragon, like it has in the past. But here's the problem. If yield issues persist, the Snapdragon variant will still have a more consistent performance and availability edge. Consumers in Exynos markets could end up feeling like guinea pigs, which would hurt trust more than help it. So what does this all mean? On one hand, the Exynos 2600 is proof that Samsung's chip division isn't down for the count. Technically, it has what it takes to not just compete, but dominate in performance benchmarks. On the other hand, without manufacturing stability, that lead could remain theoretical. Personally, I think this leak signals a bigger shift. Samsung's move to 2 nanometers is a huge milestone, not just for its phones, but for the entire semiconductor industry. If they can solve the production issues, it could open the door to slimmer devices, better battery efficiency, and performance levels that even Apple has to take seriously. And if Samsung does manage to ship this at scale, we might be looking at the first time in years where buyers actually want the Exynos variant. But right now, it's a game of what if. Qualcomm still has the safer, more reliable option ready for the Galaxy S26, Apple still dominates single-core performance with the A18 Pro, and Samsung, despite having a beast of a chip on paper, has to prove it can turn those benchmark numbers into real-world devices you can actually buy. The takeaway? Exynos isn't dead, far from it. The 2600 shows that Samsung has the engineering chops to push past Snapdragon and even challenge Apple. The question is whether it can move beyond impressive test results and deliver at scale.
Until then, the Snapdragon-powered S26 phones are likely going to be the real-world winners, while the Exynos 2600 remains more of a promise than a product. Would you trust Samsung to deliver with Exynos again, or a Snapdragon still the safer bet? What's your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section. See you in the next video. Take care.